so you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Welcome to two examples of determining a vertical stretch or vertical compression. g of x is a transformation of f of x, where g of x equals a times f of bx. We want to determine the value of a and the value of b. To do this, it'll be helpful to analyze the coordinates of corresponding points. So in f of x, let's find the coordinates of these three key points. Notice how this point would be negative six comma zero, this point would be two comma two, and this point would be six comma negative one. Then on g of x, let's find the coordinates of this point, this point, and this point. So this point here is still negative six, zero. This point here, though, is now two comma six, and this point here is now six comma negative three. So by looking at these two graphs, notice how the x-coordinates have not changed, but the y-coordinates have. This indicates we have a vertical stretch or vertical compression. But notice how the maximum value has increased and the minimum value has decreased. This indicates that f of x has been stretched vertically to form g of x. So we should recognize that means it is going to affect the value of a. We don't have a horizontal stretch or compression because the x-coordinates have not changed and therefore b would be one. But let's go ahead and take a moment and review how a and b affect the graph of a basic function f of x. Looking at the value of a, if a is greater than one, then we have a vertical stretch by a factor of a. Notice if we look at y equals f of x here in blue, y equals two times f of x is a vertical stretch and if we graph y equals 0 0.5 times f of x, we have a vertical compression. To find points when we have a vertical stretch or compression, we multiply each y coordinate by a. Now if we take a look at the value of b, where if b is greater than one, then we have a horizontal compression, which we see here in green by the graph of y equals f of two x. This is a horizontal compression, of the basic function y equals f of x. And then if b is between zero and one, we have a horizontal stretch, as we see here, by the graph of y equals f of 0 0.5x. So when we have a horizontal stretch or compression, we multiply the x-coordinates of the parent function by one divided by b, or one over b. This would also be the same as taking the x-coordinates and dividing by b. So because we already identified that we have a vertical stretch, we'll have to determine the value of a, and because we do not have a horizontal stretch or compression, b would be one. So looking at the corresponding y-coordinates, we want to determine what we have to multiply the y-coordinates of f of x by to get the y-coordinates of g of x. So let's look at the second point here. Notice that two times three is equal to six, and negative one times three is also equal to negative three. And of course, zero times three is still zero. So because we're multiplying each y-coordinate by three, that means a would be three. So we would have g of x equals three times f of, again, b is one, because we do not have a horizontal stretch or compression, so we can just write f of x. So a would be equal to three, and b would be equal to positive one. Let's take a look at a second example. Let's begin by identifying the coordinates of key points on each graph. So for f of x, we'll find the coordinates here, here, and here. So we have negative seven comma negative four. Here we have negative two comma eight and here we have six comma negative six. And then on g of x, we'll find the coordinates here, here, and here. So we have negative seven comma two, and then we have 
negative two comma negative four, and then here we have six comma three. Well, the first thing you might notice is that the y coordinates have actually changed signs, which indicates that we have a reflection across the x-axis, which means the value of a will be less than zero or negative. Visually, we should also recognize that in addition to the reflection, f of x has been compressed vertically to form g of x. So it's been vertically compressed and reflected across the x-axis. But notice how the x-coordinates are the same, and therefore we do not have a horizontal stretch or compression, so once again, b would be equal to one. Now let's analyze the corresponding y-coordinates. Here and here. Again, our goal is to determine what constant we have to multiply these y-coordinates by to obtain these y-coordinates. So we want to determine what times negative four would be equal to positive two. Well, negative four times negative one-half would be positive two, and eight times negative one-half would be negative four, and negative six times negative one-half would be positive three, which means a must be negative one-half. So g of x, is equal to negative one-half times f of x, and therefore a is equal to negative one-half, and b is equal to positive one. Remember, b is the coefficient of x, which would be positive one, because we do not have a horizontal stretch or compression. I hope you found these two examples helpful.